creative an approach to large landscape conservation can undergraduate students discover? During 2011 and 2012, Colorado College's State of the Rockies project, now in its 10th year, has chosen to address one of the largest landscape conservation issues in North America, the Colorado River Basin. We chose to address the increasingly complicated issues of water supply and demand in the basin by melding traditional research and report aspects of the project with new approaches. The task before our student researchers and explorers, large in a geographic sense, has become even more immense considering the perspective we are trying to imbue in the project's research. What voices can and should the younger generation have in protecting and managing this huge river basin and its iconic Grand Canyon? While employing the traditional aspects of the project, including student-faculty collaborative research and the publishing of our annual State of the Rockies report card, the project has also pursued new avenues of research and outreach. Engaging Rockies citizens, particularly the youth through social media, and incorporating an adventure exploration science dimension into the project have changed our approach to conservation work and proven successful in engaging young and old alike to address the complex system of one of the United States' largest rivers. Colorado College's long history with the Rocky Mountain West since 1874, coupled with its unique one course at a time block plan and location at the base of Pikes Peak in the Rockies, laid the groundwork for the State of the Rockies project nearly 10 years ago. Today, the Rockies project is still leaning on this history with the Rocky Mountain West, while also trying to incorporate the young and adventurous spirit that has defined the student body of our small liberal arts college. It was mid-October, and Zach and I were starting our journey from source to sea, going 1,700 miles down the Green and Colorado Rivers. We'd heard the Colorado River didn't reach the ocean anymore, but we were determined to see for ourselves. And we're going to try and follow whatever this is over here, um, 1,700 miles, Mexico. It's the plan. So which way is Mexico? Just as we had made it to the source, our first speaker series event was starting. It was time to create a large-scale conversation about the Colorado River Basin and its management. Us, the State of the Rockies project for 2011 and 2012 seeks to present information regarding the current issues in the basin, highlight the implications of changing climate as a variable to the current system, and incorporate perspective of future generations. I think the uh, challenge before us is, is substantial. Uh, it, we have reached a point in our uses of the water of the basin where a, e, e, the Bureau of Reclamation has now acknowledged that we are fully consuming every drop of water that the basin produces. Uh, we have already reached that point and, and uh, the, the question is, how do we then move ahead with the obviously continuing demands and needs and interests of all of the seven states, the Republic of Mexico, uh, the many Indian tribes that uh, have reservations within this area, and all of the diverse interests we have in the water and the rivers, uh, and how can we uh, meet those, uh, those different interests? Uh, I think you know, that tells us that we don't really have a lot of time to just assume that this is not a problem, that you know, we'll deal with it when we need to. I think we need to start today. Back on the river, we were enjoying the magnificent wilderness and beautiful canyons of the Colorado. But at the same time, we realized the scale of human impact on the river. So I'm standing here at the uh, first point where water is taken out of the Green River. So you can see behind me there's a big uh, diversion ditch and a lot of this water is being funneled into that irrigation canal. Just when we thought we were gonna have enough water to start kayaking, a bunch of it gets sucked out. And 
Um, I spent a good bit of my career at Environmental Defense Fund focusing on the river where it's not really a river anymore. Um, the bottom picture there is the Colorado River sinking into the sand between the state of Arizona and Baja California. So actually the Colorado River is drying up on American soil. If I have any thoughts for a conclusion, I mean, it's, a, it's sort of a, a depressing picture maybe that I laid out, except that I think this growing recognition that we live in an age of limits, that water from the Colorado River is not endless, that we cannot keep just using more. And we have been until this point, but we cannot do that anymore. That in that series of decisions and compromises and agreements and conversations, we might also be able to right some of the wrongs that have been done on this river and prevent uh, future inadvertent problems that we don't really want to have to live with. Thank you very much. As we kayaked down the river covering about 20 miles a day, the sheer immensity of the Colorado revealed itself in a way that no map ever could. We started wondering how this finite resource could meet the needs of a growing population. As Jennifer Pitt said, we live in a world of limits and the Colorado River is no exception. What were we losing in the process of transforming the river? We were about to embark through one of the largest landscape alterations the United States has ever seen, Lake Powell. God, so many houseboats. It's insane. I've been paddling across Lake Powell for about six days now. I keep reminding myself as I'm out here that there is a canyon below us and a river that is no more. And if we start from um, the belief that a river has a right to be itself, to flow, um, and a canyon has a right to not be 500 feet underwater, then um, there is something terribly wrong here. Bald eagle and coal plant. These massive dams are the most obvious impact on the Colorado River system, but a growing concern is the effect of climate change on water supply in the basin. Well, it's a real pleasure to be here in the Springs and here at Colorado College and contributing to the State of the Rockies project. Anthropogenic climate change is part of what I'll call the climate risk portfolio. Here I'm, I'm showing an ensemble of 34 projections uh, from 16 models, multiple runs from a few of those models. Every single one of them is, is forecasting a, a warmer future. Uh, for Western Colorado, for the region, and for that matter, globally. After over a hundred days of paddling down the river, we hit the U.S.-Mexico border. There at Morelos Dam, the riverbed is completely dry and the entire flow of the Colorado River is diverted into irrigation ditches. So I'm here at the, the riverbed, the old riverbed of the Rio Colorado. Uh, we just uh, took a walk over here from the irrigation canal. And this is it. This is what happens to the Colorado River. Just bone dry, old tire. This is the worst place I've ever paddled. Once, I accidentally splash a few drops into my mouth. My mouth burns. In the once lush Colorado River Delta, we were forced to hike across cracked mud flats. In areas where you could once paddle a canoe, we were forced to bushwhack through tamarisk. 
Finally, after 113 days of traveling, we made it to the Sea of Cortez. It was time to travel back to the State of the Rockies conference and share what we had seen on the river. Having just come off of the river, uh, what are some of your top takeaways that, that you've really learned on your experience? When we planned the trip, we didn't really know where the river ended up. We'd spent a lot of time in the wilderness sections of Utah um, and Colorado kayaking and rafting, um, but we'd heard that the river didn't reach the sea, but we didn't really realize what that meant until we came here and saw it. And it, it means that there's um, hundreds of thousands of acres that once had um, water flowing through, flowing through them, and all of that is, is dry now except for a select few parts, less than 10% of the original um, wetlands. Uh, you can really see the difference between you know these places that have just even a little bit of water and there's so many birds and then there's these areas that we hiked through with just mile after mile after mile of tamarisk thickets which is an invasive species and that contrast is so striking that even that tiny amount of you know agricultural wastewater basically um, can make that big of a difference in restoring the delta. Challenges are tall and they abound, but they are not unsolvable. As part of the concluding section of this year's State of the Rockies report card, our five student researchers have laid out five separate actions to ensure a healthy and viable river basin for the next generation. Now we'll turn it over to them to quickly cover their research focus over the last year and their action regarding the future of the Colorado River Basin. Uh, my section focused on dams, diversions, and water use. So currently there is a serious supply and demand imbalance in the Colorado River system. I focused on the law and policy of the river. The law of the river is comprised of over 30 independent pieces of legislation and court opinions, making it one of the most highly regulated rivers in the world. Um, and I look to answer the question, if, uh, uh, wondering if America's playground is under threat. So I was looking at the relationship between recreation and water and the future of recreation in the basin. The current situation of decreasing water supply and increasing water demand in the Colorado River Basin really requires a fundamental shift in our discourse so that we provide new ways of thinking about water supply strategies that don't jeopardize environmental needs. So and my um, section focused on the effects of climate change on the Colorado River Basin. As you can see on this slide, the Colorado River Basin will have significantly less surface water available by the mid-21st century. This is primarily due to warm temperatures affecting the snowpack that provides 80% of the water for the Colorado River. Thank you, Dr. Hecox, and you should be very proud of the, the whole program and the work that those students have done. It's very, very impressive, uh, I know. We know we're not going to develop our way out of this crisis any more than we can completely conserve our way out of this crisis. In other words, we, you saw the, the pictures of the, of the dam that, that Will and Zach described. You know, when you get south of there, there is clearly no water. So bigger, better dams aren't going to be the ultimate solution to this. They might, be, they might help us manage the problem, but they're not the solution. And we're also... The governor was listening. We may not have been able to make the decisions ourselves, but we were influencing those who did. The Secretary of the Interior, Ken Salazar. The Director of the USGS, Marsha McNutt and the governor of Colorado, John Hickenlooper. They were listening to our voice, the voice of a younger generation speaking up for their future. We're making a stand to sustain and conserve the future of the Colorado River, and we aren't done. In the summer of 2012, we launched one of the first solar rafting expeditions. We're mapping out where all the water is going, still researching, still reporting, and still engaging. Because it's the conservation efforts of today that will shape tomorrow.